Hello and welcome. I'm Philip Alexander, the Senior Editor of the Banker Magazine at the IMF and World Bank Annual Meetings for 2014. I'm here with Moritz Kramer, the Chief Ratings Officer for Sovereign Ratings at Standard & Poor's, to talk a little bit about the prospects for sovereign ratings in the Eurozone. Moritz, hello and welcome. Hello, Philip. Uh, one of the key issues uh, that was causing problems in the Eurozone was this feedback loop between the banking sector and sovereigns and the question of contingent liabilities posed by the banking sector. To what extent have the steps that have been taken in terms of bank resolution and the banking union addressed some of those concerns? Right. The banking union, of course, is, um, is, is quite relevant because the resolution regime that's, that's been decided um, upon and which will become effective in 2016 would basically make a bailout sort of less likely of, of the banks um, from, uh, from their respective sovereigns. And the link has actually weakened over the cup last couple of years. Uh, has to do with two main elements. One is that the bank are better capitalized than they used to be at the, at the depth of the crisis. And secondly, that the, ex the direct exposure that the banks have to sovereign debt um, is also relatively um, smaller from the peak. But even so, in absolute levels and compared to banking system in other regions, uh, you would still see that European banks are relatively more weakly capitalized. And you would also see that the direct exposure to the um, uh, to, to their sovereigns is, um, is still relatively large, especially on the periphery. And um, so the real question is resolution, can the governments credibly detach themselves from helping out their banks uh, in times of need? Um, you know, uh, as always, the proof is in the pudding and, and we'll have to see um, if a large systemically important bank really were to be threatened in terms of solvency, uh, whether um, sort of the banks really are prepared sort of to be uh, broken up and wound down uh, the way that the uh, banking union envisages um, remains to be seen. And in terms of the countries that were at, in the eye of the storm in the Eurozone crisis, the periphery countries that have gone through um, IMF programs and so on, what sort of progress have they made towards uh, long-term sustainability for the fiscal situation? Well, uneven progress, I, I should say, but um, the key of it really is whether growth can come back. Um, because without growth, without growth of the denominator, sort of debt burden and the capacity to carry this debt uh, will remain compromised. So uh, me looking at through this prism, you would see that a country like, like Ireland probably has made uh, most progress and, and quite symbolically they're now um, looking like they're, they're, they're you know, prepaying um, uh, the, the program to their official creditors. I think Spain has made some progress. Certainly Greece has made major reforms. Um, but, but in all those countries, uh, I think we need to, to still remember sort of what we're talking about uh, in terms of before and after. Yes, they have uh, risen sort of from the depth of the crisis, but it's a far cry from, uh, from being sort of on safe ground in the sense that you could say, well, basically they made it, they're back to where they were. If you look at unemployment rates uh, in countries like Spain or Greece, um, if you look at the high leverage that you still have in many of those uh, um, private sectors as well, like Spain and Portugal, a lot of deleveraging still is ahead of us and that will, will restrain growth for many years to come. So I think the first um, uh, acute stage has been, has been handled um, successfully and they have emerged from that without a default. Of course, Greece has defaulted, but the others. Um, but, um, but more needs to be done and it's really a long distance race um, that is still ahead of us. And overall, there was this structural question about the Eurozone, a monetary union without a, a fiscal or economic union. Do those questions still remain? Is that still an issue that um, it's not clear how the Eurozone lines up as a whole um, and there's still the risk of sort of fragmentation between the, the, the fiscal positions and as a result the sovereign ratings for the years. Well there is there is uh, certainly um, this this concern um, and uh, I, I would say to that however that the key issue is not so much sort of whether how, how many funds budgetary funds are flowing from one country to the other but will we be successful in Europe to generate an environment where growth can return and we're not talking about pre-crisis growth which has been unsustainable but some growth that can create employment that can create and, and safeguard social 
stability and can allow the countries to move forward and, and look into the future with some confidence. For that, it takes much more than fiscal policy and monetary policy. For that, it really takes an enabling business environment. It takes reforms on the tax system in many countries, on the labor market, on, 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 on a myriad of, of little sort of uh, protectionist little islands and, and certain uh, service sectors, for example. And these are really measures that can only be taken and successfully implemented at home, meaning at the national level. I think there, sort of the European level, can, can only be sort of helpful in, in trying to create the incentives uh, for societies to embrace those changes, but the leadership, the ownership needs to come um, from the nations themselves. Moritz, thank you very much.